welcome. Today we will look into the wonderful world of meshes. Throughout this tutorial, I presume that you already know how to create sculpted prints. My intention is to give you a set of guidelines, and these guidelines shall help you to master the transition from sculpty to mesh. We will begin with a simple kettle and its handle. This object is made out of two sculpties. The kettle is made from a default sculpt mat with 1024 faces, and the handle is created from a smaller mesh with 256 faces. We will now see how we can transform this object into an equivalent mesh object. Well, sculpted prims are also meshes, so we can just reuse our sculpty without any changes, and export it as a Kalada 1.4 file. Let us import this file with the mesh importer, and for now use only the default settings. Then take a look at how the object behaves in the 3D world. We see that the two objects look very similar when we are very close to them. But when we go to a distance, we see that their LOD behavior is completely different. So let us take another look at the mesh importer. You see a list of four levels of detail. By default, the highest level is selected, and when we initially loaded the kettle, it was automatically attached to this LOD. This level of detail is also currently displayed by the previewer. You can select a lower LOD by clicking on its label. And while switching the levels, you see the corresponding visible shape of the selected LOD in the preview window. Right now, all levels except the highest LOD are generated. In the lower part of the tag, you can modify the generator settings of the currently selected level. The most important parameter is the triangle limit. Playing with this value has a direct influence on the LOD shape. So you can try to optimize your LOD shape by changing this parameter. There are other parameters available to optimize the generated result. But I do not take care about these settings within this tutorial. In the lower left section of the importer you see two numbers, the resource cost, and the physics cost. But there is a third number, named server weight, which becomes important when you eventually raise your object. All three values are used to determine how many prims you have to give away, when you want to raise your mesh. The so-called prim equivalence, abbreviated to PE, is calculated by taking the highest of these numbers, and then rounded up, or down, to the nearest integer value. And the PE finally tells you the exact amount of prints which you have to give away from your prim budget when you raise this mesh. You can see immediately, that making these numbers as small as possible, will give us better optimized meshes, and a smaller prim equivalent. There are many ways to optimize these numbers. Unfortunately it is very easy to create highly expensive meshes, but highly optimized meshes are a challenge. So we have to exactly understand the cost parameters. And we will begin by looking at the resource costs. The resource cost is mostly dependent on the size of the object, and the number of triangles used in the mesh. You must know that triangles in the lowest LOD are very expensive, while they get cheaper when you go to higher levels. Therefore you should reduce the mesh as much as possible for each subsequent LOD, to get reasonable low resource costs. A good value is a reduction by a factor of 4, compared to the next higher level. But this is only a rule of thumb. You can immediately see, that the resource costs is massively affected when I reduce the number of triangles on the lowest LOD. So you may be tempted to reduce the number of expensive triangles as much as possible on the lowest level of detail, while using many more cheap triangles on the highest level. But this can be a pitfall. As I mentioned before, the resource cost for your mesh is also dependent on the size of your object. When you scale up your object, then at a certain size LOD0 will no longer be used, and now the lowest visible level of detail will be LOD1. 
and consequently the triangles of this level will become more expensive. And when you scale up more and more, then eventually only the highest level of detail will be used. Please understand that the resource costs may climb up and down when you change the size of your object after it has been raised on your land. So you should always take care about your available print budget when you attempt to rescale your build. So if you plan to make big meshes, then you have to reduce the number of triangles in the highest level of detail as much as you can. Otherwise your resource cost may explode. Our kettle is designed for a size of about 50 cm in all dimensions, so it is a small object, and all four levels of detail are used. Hence we can relax a bit, regarding the number of triangles in the highest LOD, but as you can see right now, the resource cost is still very high compared to the sculpted prime. Have you seen that the generated LOD shapes for the mesh are not very nice? But for the sculpted print the LOD behavior was good. Well, you must know that the constraints on the sculpted prints are made for optimization purposes. Especially the automatic creation of the sculpted LODs is well supported. But for arbitrary meshes it is not so easy to get reasonable well done LODs automatically. You can play with the LOD generator in the mesh importer. You may be lucky, but in most cases it will not create appropriate shapes. So I am afraid that your best option here is to make the LODs by hand. And if you do that with care, then you can get very good results. So, in the next part of this tutorial, we will create the LOD meshes for our object, and we will reuse the exact same method, which is also used for the automatically generated LOD of all sculpted prints in the world. Have a nice day!